Well, hey, everybody. God bless you. It's Fred Kropp coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, California. And I've got good news for you today, and that is that I'm going to show you today how you can begin to set the course of your life. But before we launch into that, I want you to know that I have a YouTube channel under my name, Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P, and all these messages, and I have over 300 messages on that, and you can go to my YouTube channel and you can catch up on all kinds of messages that will help you to be strong in the Lord and to accomplish His plan for your life. When you get there, click subscribe, click the bell, and click like, and, uh, and you'll, you'll be signed up for any new messages that are coming up. All right, so hey, listen, do you know that God has a plan for your life? I'm sure you've heard that before. God has a plan for your life. Well, the fact is that God does have a plan for your life, uh, and that, but that plan is in the spiritual realm. You've heard me talk about this in some of the videos. That plan is in the spiritual realm. So God has a plan. Uh, the Bible says this in Psalms 139, that before you or I were ever born, it says that God wrote a book about you. And it says, all the days that were written or planned for you before there was not yet one. So in other words, God has a plan, but you know what I've found is that God's plan is not automatic. It's not automatically going to happen. Uh, it's going to happen when we're proactive uh, with doing what the Bible says to do in how do we bring things out of the spiritual realm into the natural realm. In uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, it says this, Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on the eternal life to which you've been called, and you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So he says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on the eternal life to which you've been called. And so you have a calling, you have a, a purpose, you have plans, you have the Bible says that you and I are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared beforehand. This is Ephesians 2.10, that you and I should walk in them. So one of the things that I discovered is that there are different things that bring things out of the spiritual realm into the natural realm. And today I'm going to talk to you about one of those. In other words, how do you set the course of your life? Now you can either, you know, live life your way. You can do things your way, but the Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, the end, but the end thereof is death. So, you know what I figured out? My plans are not the best plans, but God's plan is the best plan. Think about it. God created you. God knows you inside out. He knows what everything about you. He knows your gifts, talents, and abilities. He knows your everything in your soul. He knows all about you. Wouldn't it be better to let him guide your life? Well, I would say yes to that. Absolutely. God, you know me better than me. So let's pray and let's invite the Holy Spirit to help us to understand one of the main things that the Bible teaches about how do we set the course of our life. So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much again for your love and that, Lord, you just didn't create us just to go to work and come home and have a few kids and get married and uh, make a little bit of money and then retire, but you created us for a divine purpose. And God, we want to fulfill your plan. We want to walk in the will of God. Your word tells us to be, be to understand what the will of the Lord is. So Lord, we want to redeem time. We want to uh, not just live out our days, come to the end of our life and realize we missed everything that you had for us, but we want to walk in the fullness of everything you created for us to do and everything you created us to be. We pray that in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Come on, ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Well, listen to this verse of Scripture in James chapter 3, verses 2 through 6. It says this, James says, For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look at the ships, he says. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, yet they are turned by a very small rudder, whatever the pilot desires. Even so, now listen to this, even so the tongue, how many of you have a tongue? Even, even so the tongue is a little member that, that, and it boasts of great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, the world of iniquity. The tongue is set among our members 
as that which defiles the whole body and is set on fire by the course of nature and is set on fire by hell. Now, in that passage, there's actually a root sentence. And here's what the root sentence says. It says, the tongue sets the whole course of our life. That's James chapter 3, verse 6. Uh, I'll read it to you in the New American Senate. It says, The tongue is a fire, the world of iniquity. The tongue is set among our members as that, listen to this, that sets on fire the course of our life. So it's the tongue, it's the words that we say that set the course of our life. In our last session, I talked about death and life is in the power of the tongue, and those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So we need to realize that the way God created us, he created us with this rudder called our tongue. Now you think about a horse, as he says, he uses the example of a horse. He says the bit in the horse's mouth, that by using that bit, we can direct the direction that horse goes. Then he talks about a ship. A ship is really large. It says, yet a small rudder controls the direction of that ship. And so there's a clue there for you and I. He's trying to show us that the direction, so you say, well, how do I set the course of my life? You set the rudder. That's right. By setting the direction of what you're saying over your life, over your marriage, over your family, over your job, over your ministry, over uh, your health, over uh, your, whether you're experiencing life or death, victory or defeat, your tongue is setting the course of your life. And so there's an example of this in Genesis chapter 11. Real interesting. How many remember the story of the Tower of Babel? Well, it says this, Genesis chapter 11. It says, now the whole earth used the same language and the same words. And it came about that they journeyed east and they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they settled there and they, now listen to this, and they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they used brick for stone, and they used tar for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build for ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach into heaven. And let us make a name for ourselves, a name, uh, yeah, make for ourselves a name, otherwise we'll be scattered over all the face of the earth. It says, And the Lord came down to the city and to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they all have the same language. And this is what they began to do. Now, nothing which they purpose to do will be impossible to them. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language, God says, so that they will not understand each other's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from over the face of the earth, a whole earth, and they stopped building the city. Now, here's, there's a principle there, right? Can you see it? Uh, it actually, in the Hebrew, it says, now the whole earth used the same language and the same words. And it actually means they had, they had one lip in, in the Hebrew. It means they were not only saying the same words, but they were speaking in agreement with each other. It's called the power of agreement. Jesus said, if you agree touching anything here on earth uh, uh, and agree together, it's done of our Father in heaven. And so they were using the power of agreement and speaking words, and it says they were going to build this tower, they were going to build themselves a city, and they were going to make a name for themselves. Now, God then says, because they have, and they're speaking in agreement, they're saying the same words, uh, and, uh, you know, they're, they're standing as one, uh, because of that, nothing they do shall be impossible to them. So the Lord had to actually come down and confuse. Now we have the languages uh, that come upon the earth where everybody's speaking different languages. God did that because, one, they had the wrong purpose. They had the wrong, they wanted to, uh, they wanted to build a tower, and they wanted to build a city, and they wanted to make a name for themselves. They wanted to get to make their own way to heaven instead of trusting God's way to heaven. But in this, he shows the power of our words. Because the only way that God could stop them, he says, nothing they do shall be impossible to them. So the only way God could stop them was by confusing their language or their ability to speak in agreement with each other. Do you see that? So here it's talking about the tongue. Those of you that are jumping on right now on Facebook or on YouTube, I'm talking about how to set the course of your life. And so the Bible teaches us 
that the way you set the course of your life is by what you say. Now, I'm not talking about positive confession or something like that. I'm talking about something the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches us that God made us in his image, and one of the things that's true about us and like God is our words. And that's why there's so many scriptures in the Bible warning us about making sure that we're speaking words that have grace. We're not having corrupt words in our mouth. We're not cursing. Or there's talks about blessing and cursing uh, and so on. Why does the Bible have so many scriptures about our words? Because God created us that our words would actually direct the course of your life. Now there's good news and bad news in that. The bad news is you're, you know, is that if you're speaking negative things over your life, over your family, over your marriage, over your job, over your community, the Bible actually says it says that a city is exalted or lifted up by the words that, that it says by the words that the righteous speak over that city. And so here it is. And in fact, the Bible says that a woman tears down her own house with her own hands. How does she do that? By what she says. So the fact is, is that your words are releasing faith. And the Bible says faith is what pulls things out of the spiritual realm into the natural realm, either negative or positive. Now, let me give you a, a negative ex uh, uh, example of what I'm talking about. How many remember that God brought the people of Israel out of Egypt brought them into the wilderness, but that's not where they were to stop. They were to actually go into the promised land. And so it says he brought them through the wilderness. He gave them the law. Uh, he began to speak to them. He provided for them and so on. But then it came time for them to go into the promised land. And so they sent 10 spies or 12 spies into the one from each tribe into the promised land. And they were to go and spy out the land. And they were to find out, is there, is there, you know, is there good produce there? What are the people like? What are their cities like? And so on. Well, they come back and they give the, the people a report. They give Moses the report and the people a report. And they said, yes, we went into the land. And indeed, it's just like God said, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. But the cities are fortified. And we saw the, you know, we saw the people there and they were giants. And we looked like grasshoppers in their sight. And then it says this, and they said, then they began to, it says that they gave a bad report to the people of Israel, and the people of Israel began to moan and complain, and, and they said this, and this is Numbers chapter 14, verses 1 and 2. It says, and all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, if only we had died in this wilderness. Now, there was 12 spies. Ten of them gave this bad report. Two of them, Caleb and Joshua, gave a good report. Caleb said, the Bible says in Numbers 13.30, it says, Caleb quieted the people and, uh, before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take the possession uh, of the land because we are well able to overcome it. Now, what happened was because the people gave a bad report, in other words, they released the course of their life through their words, Event, what happened was is that God said to this whole generation of people that had come out of Egypt and his intention was out of Egypt through the wilderness into the promised land. But because they received the bad report, they listened. And by the way, what you're going to say has a lot to do with what you're listening to. So they, instead of listening to the two, Caleb and Joshua, they listened to the 10. And so here's what God says in Numbers 14, 28. So God says to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness. And all of you who are numbered according to the entire number from 20 years old and above, except for Caleb, the son of Jephna, and Joshua, the son of Nun, you shall by no means enter the land which I swore to you to make you dwell. So notice here, they said, we would that we would die in Egypt. Would we, we would die in the wilderness? So God said, because that's what you're saying, because you're setting the course of your life, because of that, you're not going to enter the land. But guess what? Caleb and Joshua had a different report. And they were the only two of that whole entire generation that came out of Egypt to be brought into the promised land. 
two out of millions of people were able to go in with the next generation into the promised land. Why? Because they were setting the course of their life with the words that they were saying. So the fact is this, is that the Bible tells us that faith calls things that don't exist as though they do. And so it tells us in Romans is that God calls things, Romans chapter 4, verse 17, it says, God calls things that do not exist as though they do. And then the scripture I quoted earlier, 1 Timothy 6, 12 says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on the eternal life which you've been called, and you have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. The good confession, the word confession means to speak in agreement with, or the same, to say the same as. It's the word homologio in the Greek. So what are we supposed to speak in agreement with? We're supposed to speak in agreement with what God says about us and about our situation and about our circumstances. Come on. Even though you might be struggling financially, the Bible says, my God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Maybe you're struggling to have victory over sin, but the Bible says that you have died to sin and you're now resurrected into a new life. That sin will not have dominion over you. This is Romans chapter 6 but you will triumph over sin. Come on. Maybe you're struggling, uh, you know, in your mind. The Bible says that you are no longer under the oppression of the devil, but you have the joy of the Lord, and you have the peace of God that's going to guard your mind and heart in Christ Jesus. So when you speak in agreement with, this is how you lay hold of God's plan, his will for you, you're pulling it out. That's why, you know, Jesus said in the, in the Lord's Prayer, he says, when you pray, say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, remember what's the next part? On earth as it is in heaven. So he says, it's the, God's will is over in the spiritual realm, but I want you to pray in agreement with me that my will will be released in your life. And as you do that, you're releasing out of the spiritual realm God's plan for your life. Many years ago, I heard a great man of God, Dr. Cho, uh, Paul Youngie Cho, who was the pastor of the largest church in the world at that time, a million people, he said this. He said, you're walking on the prayers you prayed six months ago. And so, in other words, as you begin to speak over your life, begin to pray over your life out loud, and you begin to declare things over your life, you're going to actually walk those things out. You're releasing his plan in your life. You're making the way. Prayer makes the way before you and sets up God's destiny and plan for your life. So what is it, what are you speaking over your life right now? What are you speaking over your marriage? What are you speaking over your family? What are you speaking over your kids? What are you speaking over your church, your job, your city, your nation, your state? What are you speaking? You need to stop. It says, through the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted. And so instead of cursing our city, cursing our state, cursing our nation, we should be blessing our nation because we guess what? Our words are setting the course of nature or setting the course of our life. So I want to challenge you to begin to speak what the Lord says about you. It tells us that we're new creatures. Paul says we're new creations in Christ Jesus. All the old things have passed away. Uh, Paul says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. As I already quoted in Romans 6, I'm dead to sin, but I'm alive to God in Christ Jesus I want you to begin to repeat these. I want to end this message by having you repeat these things with me. And I want you to see the power that happens when you begin to speak in agreement with God's word. I want you to say this after me. Say, I am now a new creation in Christ Jesus. Go ahead and say that. I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus. All the old things have passed away. All the old things have passed away. And all things have become new. Repeat this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Here's another one. I am dead to sin, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus. I am dead to sin, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus. Sin shall not have dominion over me because I am not under law, but under grace. Let's say that. Sin shall not have dominion over me because I'm not under law, but under grace. Here's another one. Christ in me is the hope of seeing his glory through my life. Christ, that's, that's uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Christ in me is the hope of seeing his glory to my life. Here's another one. By Jesus' stripes, I am healed. 1 Peter chapter 2 talks about this. Let's say that. By Jesus' stripes, I am healed. Here's another one. This is found in Isaiah. No weapon formed against me will prosper. 
Let's say that. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Here's another one. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Maybe you're feeling defeated right now. Let's say that. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. So I can go on. I can just speak. There's so many things. In fact, I have lists of confessions, and you can email me at fcrop1948 at gmail.com, and I'm happy to send you some lists that you can confess. But we need to begin to speak because understanding that what we're saying is setting the course of our life either negative or positive. So we need to put a guard over our lips. We need to think before we talk. We need to speak in agreement with what God says about us because God says, you are my treasure. And it says that we are his, uh, we are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus for good works. Or we are God's workmanship, it says in Ephesians 2.10, created in Christ Jesus for good works that we should uh, walk, that, that God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So what we're doing is releasing that which is in the spiritual realm, God's will, into our life. I hope you got that. I hope that was helpful for you. I want to pray for you that you, uh, you know, uh, I always say they used to have this old commercial men in skin bracer and this guy would get some of this, this, uh, this cologne and he would, but when you would put it on your face, it would burn and shock you and it wake you up. Well, we need to get w woken up to the reality that our words are setting the course of our life. Let me pray for you that you will never forget this. Lord, I pray for everyone that's watching right now that they'll begin to make a decision. I'm going to set the course of my life the way God wants it to be. I'm going to release God's will into my life according to God's plan and according to God's perfect plan for my life. I'm going to renew my mind with the word and I'm going to speak what the word says about me, not what my circumstances, feelings, emotions, even my own thoughts say about me. I'm going to speak the truth over my life I pray that for you right now in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, it's Fred Croft coming to you from the Healing Rooms here in Santa Maria, California. Again, I want to remind you to make sure that you go to my uh, web, uh, go to my uh, YouTube channel, which is Fred Crop K R O P P, and you catch up on these messages. Also, I wrote a book called One Simple Act of Obedience, uh, which is published by uh, TBN Publishing. And uh, you can find it on Amazon. I encourage you to go there. It's, it's going to help you and encourage you and strengthen you. In the meantime, I want you to know that God loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.